Hey everyone, it's Eric from FirearmTutorials.com. Today we're looking at the SWR Warlock 2. I just picked it up today, so see what it looks like fresh out of the box. Read the manual, blah, blah, blah. And this is normal, normal stuff. Looks like the only other useful thing we have here is the takedown tool and how to use it. So it comes in this little pouch here. It's so small and so light. So this is what we've got. Threaded in one half by 28. And um, brand new, I haven't shot this yet. So what I wanted to do was check out the uh, insides of this before I shoot it and see uh, how dirty it gets um, <clears throat> putting a uh, few hundred rounds through it. All right, so here's the, look at that. All right, so here's the end cap. It's got a, uh, a little ring on it, a little O-ring seal. Um, obviously the tube, nice and clean in there because it's brand new. Then we've got the baffles, which have a little bit of oil on them. And nothing special here. I will say the thing I'm surprised most about this is just how light it is. I mean, this thing weighs nothing. I think, I think it's stated to weigh, uh, like around two ounces or so. So not much. Um, what I'm interested to see here is I'm going to compare this to the Tyrant. I have the Tyrant 45, which I've been using um, to shoot 22s. And I'll be interested to see, A, if... Um, If the uh, if it's any quieter or how how much quieter it is, and then I'll also um, like to know the if there's a POI shift because with the uh, Tyrant, if I shoot it out of a uh, Savage bolt action gun at 25 yards, it shoots about three inches low. Um, so I'm wondering, once I put this on here, if it will hold the same zero suppressed as it will unsuppressed, at least at 25 yards. So that's the Warlock. Um, longest thing, obviously, was waiting for this guy. So um, I'm going to go ahead and take it out and, and use it a little bit, and uh, we'll see what it looks like after I'm done. All right, we're back. So my uh, plans didn't go quite as I had wanted them to go. So. I took a couple shots outside with the Ruger 2245 just to pique my curiosity. Then I decided I wanted to shoot it indoors, so I grabbed my stuff and went to the local range over here. And then once I got there, I realized that I had left the gun at home. So the only uh, thing I was able to use was the bolt action Savage gun, which I shot about 75 rounds through. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got here. Let's see if this may or may not be dirty. And the ammo I was using was, uh, whoa, was um, <clears throat> CCI standard velocity. So it was subsonic lead nose. 
right, so it looks like the uh, tube is still just as clean, I think, as uh, uh, there's a little bit of stuff between, you see right there, those little rib looking things, where it looks like some carbon came out between the baffles. So, in here we've got a little bit of, uh, let's check the light here. So in here you can see there's a little bit of stuff in there. Just a um, little bit of like pieces of lead and stuff it looks like. Give you a better look at it there. So it's actually not too bad. The back of it, it's a, got a little bit of stuff on it, but not much. Like I said, for 200, and, or uh, I wanted to shoot about 250 is what I wanted to shoot. And then, of course, forgetting the gun kind of screwed us there. So, so that's a look at the uh, Warlock. I mean, there's really not much to it. Like I said, it's so light. One of the things that I uh, don't like about that bolt action Savage gun is that um, it is a uh, it's a 22 with a 16 inch barrel. It's a bull barrel, but it's still so short that the gun itself is so light that. Um, Kind of makes it hard to shoot accurately because when you're trying to hold it on target every little bit you move it really translates down range so um, this is a really light suppressor which didn't uh didn't help that now here's the tyrant 45 so here's a little bit of a comparison between the two you can see there's a pretty big difference both uh circumference wise and and height but um, <clears throat> this was this actually made shooting the bolt action better because it was it's so much heavier that it added a little bit of weight to the gun and helped you balance it out balance it out this doesn't do that it's great on the pistol but not so much on that bolt action rifle um, however you see the difference in the uh, in the holes here 22 verse 45 as far as sound goes, on the handgun, I didn't notice a difference, unfortunately. Um, I put the uh, Tyran on, took a couple shots with it, took that off, put this on, took a couple shots with it, couldn't notice a difference. Um, I did notice a slight difference with the uh, bolt action, just an ever so slight difference. Again, I was using the same ammo in both of them. Um, but what I did notice is it did seem to fix the POI shift I had with the Tyrant. So I had the gun zeroed at 25 yards and unsuppressed, it was dead on. Um, when I would put the Tyrant on, I would have to aim uh, a good almost three inches high at 25 yards. Um, I wasn't sure if it was the size of the exit hole on the suppressor or the uh, weight of the can hanging off the end of the rifle. But whatever the case may be, once I went with the Warlock, um, it was pretty much dead on, um, suppressed or unsuppressed. So thought I'd mention that. And um, that's about it for the uh, SWR Warlock. I'll give you one last look at it up close here. Um, the finish on it seems about the same as the Tyrant. I don't know exactly what they are, but they seem the same. Um, the, ty the Tyrant is obviously titanium where this is uh, uh, stainless steel or actually I think it's all aluminum and that's why it's so light. So that's it. I mean, it's a little more than six inches or so. I don't know. Six and a half inches maybe. So that's it. The tax stamp will cost you uh, almost as much as the suppressor and 
you're still gonna have to wait six, seven months, five months if you're lucky. So that's the Warlock, guys. Thanks for watching. All right, guys, there's a couple things that I uh, forgot to mention about this that I thought were worth mentioning. Um, I started reading the uh, documentation that came with it, and there was a couple things in here that sparked my interest. Um, it's not full auto rated. It says, for use on single shot or semi-auto firearms only. There was also a uh, little warning in here that I thought was interesting. It says, because sound suppressed firearms make less noise than non-suppressed firearms, it is easier to, to forget that they are still firearms and capable of causing bodily injury and property damage. So it's the same as safe handling requirements that apply to non-suppressed firearms apply to a suppressed firearm. Um, so it's not full auto capable and the Warlock is gonna be good for uh, 22 LR only. The, uh, I think it's the Spectre is the top of the line, 22 can they make. This is obviously the cheapest one. And the only difference is that may be full auto rated, I'm not sure, but um, with the Spectre, you can use like 5.7, 17 HMR, those other kind of luxury calibers. Um, I don't have any guns that um, would work with those calibers anyway, so I just stuck with uh, 22 LR. So that's it, guys. If you have any questions, um, let me know. Thanks for watching.